In this video, we're going to be creating a scrolling ticker tape in Figma. This is the final result. And the great thing about this is that it keeps running on its own in a loop in prototype mode when you're presenting your design. You can also easily change the content thanks to the structure of this component. And if you'd like to save time and download the source file for this, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's get started with creating this animated component. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a frame that will be a placeholder for our page, right? So this is going to serve as a page, uh, quote unquote, that we're going to paste our uh, scrolling ticker tape into, right? So let me just create a frame that is 1600 by like 1000 or so. And I am going to rename this frame to page. Um, actually, let's make that 1440 so that it fits precisely on my screen. And the typical scenario for this is usually when you have a page like this, and then you maybe want to promote a, an ongoing summer sale or some specific offers, something very, you know, time sensitive and maybe um, limited edition or unique. So for example, let's say that this would live directly on your homepage. And if we were to place this element that would go somewhere like around here, right, for example, or at the very top, depends uh, on what you prefer. And here would be some text maybe with links running through through your page. So with that in mind, um, of course, this component is going to be rather wide. Uh, so it's going to be a frame that is as wide as this screen. And it's going to be like very, very short. And um, I'm going to create a frame using my frame tool by pressing F. I'm going to create a frame that is uh, the same as this page, right? Oops, as this page. So that would be 1440. And so I'm going to type that in right here. And then let's go for like 80, 90 in, in the height. Also, that's, you know, uh, up to your preference. And I'm going to rename this frame to ticker tape content, right? So this is going to be the content and I'm going to turn this into a component so that, um, you know, this can be replicable. And the reason why we want to replicate this is that we want to actually use an instance of this. So I'm going to go to assets and then under the current page name, I'm going to use an instance of this on my page. So of course, if you're familiar com with components, um, you should know that when we change color, for example, in here, now uh, this updates across all these instances, which in this case is just this single one, right? And by the way, if you're not familiar with uh, components, make sure to check out my channel where I did multiple videos on components and instances and how they work. Um, it's essential to understand Figma uh, to its fullest extent. And yeah, so with this uh, component instance on my page, I am going to take this and then press, um, I'm going to select the instance, right? So this is the instance. I'm going to press Command Option G, which will create a frame around this component instance. And because um, this component instance is 1440 by 90, that's going to be the size for this new frame. And I'm going to rename this frame to ticker tape. And then I'm going to turn that into a component, right? So what's happening here right now is that we have a ticker tape content component, the instance of which is placed within a ticker tape component, right? You can see the structure right here. So this means that whenever I update anything in this area, you know, in this component, like adding some objects and text uh, specifically, this is going to be reflected in this component as well, because this component currently, the only thing it contains is this previous component instance, right? So I hope this is making sense. Uh, if it isn't, make sure to leave a comment below with a timestamp. Now that I have this, I'm going to actually select the ticker tape component. By the way, th this line is, is here just to for me to see where the ticker tape uh, begins, the content where it begins and when it ends. Um, so I'm going to select the ticker tape content within this second component. I'm going to duplicate that. Right. So now we have two and then I'm going to move that all the way basically um, outside of the frame, but only basically. Right. So keep in mind that whenever we move something outside of the frame, it can still be within the frame logically, but outside of the frame spatially, if that makes sense. 
because then if we move the frame or the component in this uh, instance, then we move this as well, even though it looks as if it's outside of the frame, right? So that's also a very important concept. So make sure you understand that. Then I'm going to move this closer together and so close actually that it touches precisely so that there is a zero pixel, uh, zero point distance from the right edge of, of this, right? So now let's recap what do we have here. We have a ticker tape component containing two instances of the ticker tape content. So whenever we change ticker tape content, this is going to be updated here twice, okay? Uh, so hopefully this all makes sense. And what I'm going to do next is actually I'm going to select this second component, create this plus on the top. Okay, so add a variant. This variant is going to be called end because the end of the animation. And then the first one is going to be called not default, but start. So we have two uh, variants. One of them is called start and the second one end. And I'm just going to change the property of this, the name of the property to position, right? So just so that we know where this actually is. The next thing I have to do is actually select the end variant, press enter to select both of these instances. And then under X in the frame section, I have to move this to the left by 1440, right? So what I'm trying to do here is position this second instance to the same position as the first instance currently is. And because that's precisely 1440 to the left, then we have to subtract 1440 from the mixed value that we have right here. So with this field selected, I'm going to type in minus 1440 and this is going to move uh, both of them to this new position, right? So if we just zoom out a little bit, if we just make this bigger so that we can see all of this, here's what's happening, right? In the first state, you have two, also two instances, but it's aligned to the left. And in the second one, it's aligned to the right. Okay, if that makes sense. So now what happens if we select both of these variants and select clip content? They look absolutely identical. And that is no surprise because we have simply used the same component twice and just moved it, right? So we moved the second in and the first one out. So now it's no surprise that these ones are actually identical, okay? Now let me start creating some content for our ticker tape. So I'm gonna just use my text tool and type in limited, I'm gonna use all caps because this is serious, limited time offer 50% off on everything okay and this is going to be a uh, roboto uh, mono actually right i like how this font actually looks uh, and it's going to be bold and it's going to be smaller it's going to be like um 28 and so you can you can put in whatever whatever you need um and this is just me putting in something right so this limited time offer 50 percent off on everything we could make this even more prominent by underlining it, for example, or just highlighting it in some specific way that I haven't yet uh, thought about. Like, let's say a circle, let's just, let's just make it encircled, right? So I'm gonna create an ellipse, add a stroke, that's gonna be like red, um, and it's going to be placed over the everything word, okay? And th this is going to be an, it's gonna, be first of all it's going to be like bigger like this and it's going to be an angular gradient okay just to make this a bit more interesting i'm basically just you know messing around at this point so i'm gonna move i'm gonna move it's challenging i'm gonna move this these points that we have here these gradient points around this area i'm gonna make these two transparent i'm just gonna extend this all the way here and then all the way here i'm pressing alt and then dragging yeah so now this word uh, looks spatially encircled, basically, I guess, right? So don't think too much about it. It's just to have something interesting on, uh, on, on our ticker tape, okay? Maybe we want to make it white because this looks really weird. So instead of red, let's go for white. Would that look better? Yeah, let's go with, with this. Okay, so everything is 50% off. Obviously, this is something you want to be uh, visible at all times across your whole website 
Then I'm gonna press duplicate this text and add a bullet point, whoops, a bullet point. And after that, I'm going to duplicate that again. Uh, let's say use, use discount, discount code, all 50 at checkout. Okay, so we have to move this a little bit closer together. Maybe make the font even smaller. Let's go for 26 with these two as well, 26. All right, so we have our ticker tape content. And now we need to actually animate this. You wanna make it move everywhere. So I'm gonna select the first variant, the start variant, and then I'm going to go to prototype and connect the first state with the second state, right? So that's going to be after delay, one millisecond, change to position end, and it's going to be smart animate, right? Linear, but here's the trick. This is going to take 7,000 milliseconds, right? It's gonna be very long on purpose just to make it run uh, across the screen uh, in seven seconds. Then I'm gonna select the second state and I'm gonna connect that to the first state, right? And I'm going to say after delay, one millisecond, change to position start, and this is gonna be instant, okay? This is gonna be instant. So what did we just do? So we basically told Figma that, hey, you're gonna start here and then immediately after being in this state, after one millisecond, you're gonna start changing towards the second state. And this is going to be smart animate, which means that whenever there are two similar objects, you're gonna you know, move them across the screen. There's gonna be animation. And, and this transition is gonna take seven seconds, okay? So that's first part of the instructions for Figma. And the second part is as soon as you arrive fully in the second state, you wait one millisecond and then you instantly change back to the first one. But then when you get back to the first one, you immediately after one millisecond, you start changing to uh, the second state, right? With the animation. And as you can see, you probably now understand why actually this will keep on going, right? Because we have created a loop an infinite loop uh, using the after delay interaction with in combination with smart animation. So now let me actually go to assets and select not the ticker tape content, but ticker tape, right? Be very careful about this. And I'm gonna place the ticker tape component onto my screen and I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna put it right here and then I am going to launch the prototype. And here it is, here's the final result. So as you can see, we're on the page and this just keeps on moving until infinity basically so uh, this is just animated you know it keeps running wherever i scroll it's just you know we have created a loop so that's why it keeps going and then then let's say that we want to remove the circle from this right so we decided that it looks bad so i'm going to just go over to ticker tape content and then i'm going to remove this and maybe we also want to make the interaction a bit you know the animation a bit slower so let's go for 10 thousand milliseconds instead of um, seven. Uh, I think that's the highest you can go with Figma. And then you can see that it, it's being slowed down, right? We have to press reset R. So now it just without the circle and then also it runs slower. Let's say you also wanna create a second ticker tape that's gonna be like yellow, right? So let's just, we can just duplicate the second one, right? So we're gonna call this ticker tape two and we can just change the green color to yellow, right? So the green color is gonna be yellow now. And if you wanted to also change the text, for example, or change this completely, you'd have to duplicate this component as well, which probably means creating variants and then moving, you know, duplicating that because duplicating at this point with this component just creates an instance, you know, we would have to do this and then and then this and then you would have to place these inside of the second one so we're not going to do that you know for now let's just keep that simple and so if we wanted to use second ticker so let's second tape let me just duplicate this one and then go to assets and use ticker tape 2 and place it right here maybe just to make it a bit more interesting let's just do this just make it you know, tilt it and then um, the second one as well and place it right here and then, you know, maybe make it even larger. So this is impossible to miss. Let's launch the prototype and see what we have created. And this is it, right? So we have two types of, you know, running ticker tapes and uh, wow, I'm getting dizzy. So I don't recommend doing this, 
but uh, there is one thing that I guarantee nobody will ever miss this. Nobody visiting your page will ever miss this. So um, use an element like this with caution because the attention it grabs is you know, a lot, you know, use it, use it wisely. Um, and yeah, so using after delay interactions with Smart Animate, you can create looping animations in Figma. This is it. Uh, if you'd like to download the source file for this, make sure to check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. And uh, yeah, if you, if you found this video useful, leave a like. If there's anything unclear, make sure to leave a comment with a timestamp. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.